But when I think back to what really inspired me and when I really started falling in love with food, it always leads back to my grandmother. Um, I wasn't the most well-behaved kid when I was growing up and I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. Born and raised in Mahaika. But you know, later on in her life, she moved to Canada. So as a small kid, I spent a lot of time with her. Some of my oldest memories is her with her Loha and still on, sitting on the floor of her apartment grating coconut choca. You know, the sights, the sounds, the aromatics, the noises, the smells, all coming from the kitchen, I always gravitated towards that. So when I think back to my early memories, it leads always to my mother and my grandmother for sure. 2019, I'm traveling for four months. I'm cooking in Turks and Caicos, cooking through India, Pakistan, Istanbul, London. I return home on March 15th and on March 20th, 2020 lockdown, I release Chef Dev at Home, which is a cooking series on social media. Naturally, I would sign the videos off with mad love. I speak with a lot of slang, right? So I'm very much a kill him with kindness kind of guy. I lead with love. The world needs more love. I have mad love to give. I cook with mad love. It just stuck, man. And when we were coming up with the cookbook, I had to fight with the publisher for that name because they thought it would be misconstrued or didn't make as much sense as a typical cookbook uh, would have a kind of straightforward kind of um, name. So I'm so happy that, uh, that uh, we pushed Mad Love through because now it's just performing so well and it's very much Devin. This is my debut cookbook, man. And to be honest with you, like I'm happy I wrote it when I did because this lane of like showcasing and modernizing East and West Indian cuisine, because I lean heavily into my South Asian roots. Yeah. Um, it only really, I only really grabbed this bull by the horns maybe four or five years ago. So if I wrote this book five years ago, you would have a cookbook or, or a book with world inspired recipes. There wouldn't be as much of a point of view or a theme running through it like there is now. Right. One of the things I'm trying to do is take our cuisine and take the food that I grew up with and while I'm paying respect to the traditions of it and, and paying homage to that, I also want to change things a little bit and do things a bit differently. So if you see me do like a pepper pot grilled cheese, it's taking something and, and putting it into a familiar form that people outside of our culture can relate to it and say, oh, okay, I see what's going on there, right? I take fancy cheeses, truffle pecorino, and I put it in my cheese roll. You know, like I don't think there's just one way to do things, but the, re the reaction has been good. Uh, I didn't know when I was a young kid I could follow something I was super passionate about. Like when I grew up at Temple, I started like at 10, 11 years old, I stopped going in, in, to do service and I started going to the, the kitchen to like scrape, you know, like here for 500 people with the boat paddle to go retrieve like hot peppers and ginger and like stir dal and like very basic tasks, right, on a stool. But um, I didn't know I could follow my passion, man, to be honest with you. So if anybody's out there and anybody's watching this, if you're really passionate about something, there's something that you can't get off your mind, you should definitely pursue it. Uh, pursue it at all costs, you know? Um, I don't want to tell anybody out there not to listen to what their parents say. It took me a while to get into culinary. I got into culinary in 2009, but I'm really happy I got into it when I did, man, and I didn't look back. But like, you could do anything. You just have to work your ass off. There's five recipes or six from my mom. They're actually my grandmother's. And my grandmother is no longer here, bless her soul. Uh, both my grandmothers from both sides of my family, mom and dad, they had such a big impact on me. So the fact that there's like children in like Switzerland making my mom's dal recipe is mind blowing. So it's a legacy not only for me, but my family and the community. So it's a huge blessing. I never thought it would come to fruition the way that it has. Thank you. I was so excited to hear that there was a, a chef um, uh, launching a cookbook and that it had some Guyanese recipes in it. So when we started flipping through it, we were super excited to see egg ball and bag and choca and bacon salt fish. And there's instructions on how to make his mom's roti. So really, really exciting. And they're all memories for me of, uh, of time in Guyana. And I really look forward to being able to make them. Uh, it's available on Amazon. Um, obviously we're here at Grand Coastal and, and I have copies here. And I love this place. They're always so, so nice to me. So please come check it out. Uh, but it's happyhome.gy. They're available. The only thing is they won't be signed, but I will be coming back to Guyana to sign them. Babe Cave also has uh, some books kicking around and there's a few more places in the city where you can get books. I'll be posting about it on my social media, but for sure, happyhome.gy. Hit the website up. They distribute all across the country.